throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies and we go as guided. We, we connect with our soul source connection and we listen to what the information is for the week and for the overall energies. And... As we always say, as you're joining, please put in uh, the comments the uh, hello and where you're joining from. Uh, as Olivia, welcome Olivia, welcome Jennifer, as you're doing. And we will look at some very powerful energies. And uh, forgive me, I'm sure you all can hear me properly. I'm not hearing myself properly. So welcome to another week of Mercury uh, retrograde. And in fact, our final week of Mercury retrograde. And the final Mercury retrogrades. For the year for 2023. So, anyways, not to not to delay and not to uh, allow anything. Welcome, Kenny. Um, so, we have some really incredible energies at play this week, and I want to just start off. Welcome, Ava. I want to start off with our main theme um, because it's going to set the tone, and we are working. It's it had it. Coincides with hexagram 13, but you're going to see a lot of um, what would appear to be disparate or disjointed uh, components, and yet they're not. They're so beautifully woven together by the unseen. So, the main theme, just to kick everything off, the main theme is union of forces, heaven and fire. And so, this is about bridging. You know, we always have that beautiful um, idiom, as above, so below. Well, heaven and fire, this union of forces. And what the unseen, welcome Sue, welcome Lorna, what the unseen is saying to us, and it's a very powerful message, is this union of forces, fellowship, love, and this heaven and fire. And what this means is, that we are bringing these components, these disparate components of ourselves, of each other, of heaven and earth, they're all coming together. They're merging together. And what's very interesting is, uh, of course, 2023 is a seven year. Well, the interesting component about this is that seven and 13, so hexagram seven and hexagram 13 go together. Because in one facet, seven is the army, it's the legions and the correct discipline. Welcome, Brigitte. And here, 13 is about fellowship, union. And it's when we take the individuality of, of ourselves and we merge it, we, we come back to center. We merge it back to a place where we understand, a, conscious, a consciousness where we understand we are not an island unto ourselves. We are not alone. Never have been, never will be. And that we unite. And remember, next year, last month, next year, the 8th, August is an 8 month, 2024 is an 8 year. And it is about this unifying, uniting. So it's bringing these pieces back together. And, you know, the simple point about this is that we know this to be true. We Anybody that is walking with spiritual awareness and, and spirituality and so forth, consciousness, knows this truth that we are all interconnected. We are all one. That's the power of this message of this week. And what's very interesting as well, so this union of forces. And something else that's interesting because it plays to the astrology going on right now so coming up on Thursday is the new moon in Virgo. And I'm just going to bring up the chart for a second. Let me bring that up. I'm going to share my screen. I have to get to it very quickly. But the point here is that, um, 
and I'm going to share my screen with you all. Here we go. There we go. So now you can see this is the natal chart for the Virgo new moon that's occurring on Thursday. Mercury goes direct on Friday. So let's see. Um, uh she's just asking is everyone frozen hopefully not um place in the comments that you're uh, you, that you're able to hear me and i apologize again mercury going direct it stations direct friday so it's it's much more powerful wonderful it's play okay so what you see up on the screen is the natal chart for the virgo newman that's occurring on thursday and you'll see it on the right hand side um, of your chart you see the sun and the moon together at 21 degrees, 58 minutes of Virgo. If you look kind of top left of your screen, you're going to see Capricorn. You're going to see Pluto and Capricorn. And it, Pluto's retrograde, remember, it's going direct. Um, it will go start going direct, and then it officially moves into Aquarius at the end of January, 124-24. Come straight down from Capricorn, and you're going to see Jupiter and Uranus at 15 degrees and 22 degrees, in Taurus. So the sun and the moon, Pluto in Capricorn, sun and moon in Virgo, Pluto in Capricorn, uh, Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, all Earth signs. So they're making what's called an Earth Grand Trine. It's a very harmonious aspect. It's very positive. And it's about, and notice how the, in, when you look in the center of the wheel, you see the blue lines. And we spoke about this a couple of shows ago. Um, it was a different configuration, but the aspect is similar. How it made that, like the landing pod, um, anything when, when uh, the astronauts go to the moon and they come back and then the pod lands. You can see how the tip of the pod here is then with uh, Neptune in Pisces. So it's a very interesting element about this and then this coincides with back on the 23rd we had the show called noblesse oblige it's french and it's in essence the nobility is obligated because mercury was going retrograde at 21 degrees virgo well now the sun and the moon are at that same degree almost a month later few, about three weeks later and so what we're talking about here is this point about union and this fellowship. And are you ready? And let me just bring up, um, are we ready for this sense of heredity, hereditary nobility? That's what we're talking about. This point, because the Virgo new moon. And it brings this in together. And I hope I'm doing this justice. I apologize. The point that they're making for us, that the unseen is making, because they said back then, time to act, strike while the iron's hot. Well, now it's this union of forces, fellowship, love, heaven and fire coming together. Exactly. It's like a kite formation flying. Exactly. And so you can see how there's this levity even and that and it's an earth grand trine which means it's tangible it's positive and all earth signs tangible and thus there's this beauty about it the first thing they said to me was it furthers one to cross the great river it furthers all to cross the great river river and the crossing of the great river is about uniting joining moving advancing and they said concordance and so there's this piece of unity that is playing out and the fact that mercury was at this point a few weeks ago the sun and moon the virgo new moon is going to be at this point and this application or this overlay, if you will, of Virgo 22, the Sabian symbol, a royal coat of arms enriched with precious stones. The certification of aristocratic status at whatever level nobility expresses itself in cultural eminence. 
And the whole point here is about the royal road. This spiritual attainment is the result of a series of long, repeated efforts. It is the end of a royal road. In the broadest sense of the term, Raha meaning king. And so see, it's the culmination. It's at the very, and so at the very end of this patriarchal Piscean era, this long road, 2,000 plus years, it furthers one to cross the great river. Concordance, unify, come together. And you'll see how hexagram 13, which is union, fellowship, love, heaven and fire, is the way. It's the way because it demonstrates the new, the unity of the new. And it goes on to say about this Sabian symbol, um, it refers to heredity rather than to the training of youthful raw material. Um, Gautama, the Buddha, was known occultly as he who comes after his predecessors. And we spoke about this, that we're standing on the shoulders of giants. We, we, 8 billion souls on the planet right now, came for this moment. For this moment of wisdom, transformation, transcendence, the moving from one era, one epic, Piscean, to Aquarian, patriarchal to matriarchal, for the advance, the advancement of it. And so it says, the coat of arms represents the collective status, the spiritual office. Whoever wears it assumes the responsibility of an office. As the French say, noblesse oblige, nobility confers upon humankind exacting responsibility. This used to apply, of course, yes, to monarchies and so forth back in the day. What they're saying, what the unseen is saying to us is, noblesse oblige, nobility confers upon humankind exacting responsibility. The question implied in the symbol is, are you willing, able, and ready to assume a, quote, royal office at whatever level it may be? That's what they're talking about. It, it is to remember, remember back to August 23rd, the show, Noblesse Oblige, it was about re, uh, remembering our lineage, our divinity, our royalty. And are you ready, willing, and able at whatever point? And Virgo, new moon, Virgo represents the virgin, the divine feminine, the matriarchal rule. Are you ready? Because it's a union of forces, heaven and fire. Are you ready to assume the office at whatever level? Wherever, whatever station we are in life, are we ready to assume the responsibility that goes with our royalty, our lineage, our... Um, they're giving me this... Our material, they're saying our material finances, meaning where we are in, in the here and now, in the tangible. It's not relating to money, but they're saying material finances, meaning that which is tangible. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you have a dollar in the bank or, you know, a hundred billion in the bank. That's irrelevant. It's what's inside of you. It's your literally your divine status. And thereby, at this moment, we're coming with this joining of forces. So let me bring up, um, I'm going to go to the main energies really quickly, and let me just bring in, um, I'm just looking at Sue's comments. And yes, thank you, many are getting in the way. And uh, causing undue pain. But see, everything, everything about this time is purposeful. It's, it can be painful. Yes, what's coming up on the main, you know, stages and so forth is painful because it's playing out. It's the old is going to crumble as the new rises. And so looking at the main energies, 
The month is nine, small restraint, surrender. It isn't about surrendering to external forces. It is not about waving the white flag and giving up. That is not what small restraint surrender means. What it means is to surrender to your soul self, heaven and fire, union of forces, your soul source connection. So in each step, surrender to that. Thirteen is union of forces, coming together, uniting. We're going to bridge the gap. We're going to cross the great river, concordance. The one and the three become a four. It's youthful folly. Try again. See, it's not about giving up. It's about youthful folly, enthusiasm, knowing that we will try again and we will succeed. Seven, army legions, correct discipline, taking the correct steps, being leading with your soul. Your ego mind personality is not, a, is not always about correct discipline. We can see this on the world stage. Correct discipline is the soul. It's listening to the soul. All of the numbers, the 9, the 13, and the 20, 23, become a 20. And it's, uh, there's a typo there. Contemplation. It's a higher view. Remember, we have had this beautiful, I'm going to bring it up really quickly. This, has, this image, the 20 over 2, this higher contemplation. The all-seeing owl, wisdom, and the golden apple, eternal knowledge, eternal wisdom, divine wisdom and knowledge. So you can see that there's, there's a play, if you've been watching the shows and following along, there is this culmination, this crescendoing effect about ancient wisdom, ancient knowledge, golden wisdom, and this main theme today Union of forces, heaven and fire, heaven and earth coming together. This heaven and fire aspect of ourselves, of our divine selves coming together. So in that, sorry, let me just go back really quickly, sorry. And then last, two is, two is the divine feminine. It is the receptive power to reflect, to see ourselves, and to know that we are advancing. That is, and let me combine this with the astrological influences. On 9-3, Venus went direct at 12 degrees Leo. On 9-4, Jupiter went retrograde. And remember from that show, Jupiter's retrograde between now and the, literally the end of the year, and it, it, was, it uh, triggers the Taurus avatar, the, the Taurus gate. And there's this whole piece of empowerment with Jupiter where it's like, because Jupiter moves faster than Pluto. Their orbits are drastically different. Well, Plu uh, Jupiter being the, the great benefactor, Pluto being the one that's bringing up what needs to be cleansed, right? It's bringing up what's been in the shadow, bringing it into the light so we can see. Well, with this Jupiter going retrograde, there's this prominence about our deliverance. This is what they're saying to me in the moment. It's like there's a, um, where, where retribution loses its, um, because it's not about retribution, it's about cleansing. And so where things have been askew, they get corrected. And that's going to happen with these four months through the end of the year. And then, of course, as, as uh, Jupiter goes direct, Pluto comes just behind it. 124 24 and formally goes into um, Aquarius. That hasn't happened in 246 years. Not since the French and American revolutions, not since the Industrial Revolution. So the point is that we're tidying everything up, we're advancing, we're cleaning the house, and we're moving forward. Union of forces, cross, crossing the Great River. Then on 914, two things occur. We have the Virgo new moon, which we've talked about at 21 degrees. And we have an, er, pardon me, Earth grand trine, the sun, the moon, Jupiter, Uranus, and Pluto. This very um, positive, 
fortunate aspect. On 9.15, Mercury stations direct, so a day later. So we're moving forward. So how we think, how we speak, think, communicate, Mercury goes direct. Right at the same time as this auspicious new Virgo moon. At that same degree from a few weeks ago that uh, Mercury went retrograde at. So, and then they said to me, the astrological influence, leaping lizards, a cosmic jump forward. And I had to look up leaping lizards because I'm like, where does that come from? And literally, it's from Little Orphan Annie. And they have given us, the sun will come out tomorrow, from Annie. And what it means, so leaping lizards is from Little Orphan Annie. And what it means is, wow, oh my goodness. So auspiciousness, something like, oh wow. And they're saying leaping lizards, like, oh wow, a cosmic jump forward. That is where this, so we're going to see this wow effect and this cosmic leaping forward beginning with this Virgo new moon. That is the, uh, that is the implication. That is the um, opportunity. That's what's on offer. And they're saying to me, that's the promise. So all of this stuff, stuff. And you see on the world stage, a lot of stuff that is very, um, appears to be negative, unattractive, uh, combustible. Uh, And the fear is we're going backwards. The fear is somehow that will prevail. And the unseen is being very clear. No. No. The arc of destiny moves forward. We will move forward. And they said, the second thing they said is, bright is the message of the day. So bright is the message of the day, meaning the message of the day is bright. And they said, follow your soul to its highest point. Bright is the message of the day. So don't fall into despair or worry. Don't buy into the illusion because the old ways, remember, calm, chaos, calm. We're in the chaos, but we're moving to calm. And so don't buy into the chaos. Don't buy into the illusion of what's happening. Bright is the message of the day. Follow your soul to its highest point. And it's and just the realization of that statement is when you imagine following your soul to its highest point, well, it's limitless. It is it's never ending. Its goal is to move higher, higher and higher and higher. I'm bringing this up. Remember the the image of this image from the movie uh, Up. And all of these balloons lifting us and the the house representing our home, our vessel, our soul. So our bodies house our soul. And we're being lifted up. That is the message. Bright is the message of the day. Follow your soul to its highest point. So they're really, what they're talking about in this moment from this Virgo new moon moving forward. And really it's been ongoing, as you all know. It's been ongoing. It's culminating. It's building. Because it is going to lift us higher. It's a fait accompli. That's a done deal. There is no going back. As Brigitte is saying, don't get caught in the loops. Exactly. Don't get caught in the loops. Don't get caught off guard. Stay right in the center. And with that, is the promise. Bright is the message of the day. It's it's a done deal. And so while it may look, you know, like while we got to walk through, sometimes we, we you know, I, I was in Portree, uh, which is the capital of the Isle of Skye um, in Scotland. And some colleagues and I, we were attending a metaphysical um, spiritual event. It was raining. We were just coming back from lunch. 
and this miniature, in comparison to the U.S., miniature lorry truck like that would uh, that would haul cattle and so forth, livestock, was coming up the street. We were walking up, and we had just gotten to the corner, and it was going to turn in front of us to the right. Our hotel was on the opposite side of this upper main street. And just as we were standing at the corner and the lorry truck came around and turned in front of us, it's raining. It's projectile shooting out of the back of this lorry truck, excrement from the livestock, like liquid. And we all jumped backwards, like, and we're looking at ourselves going, oh, God, you know, did anybody get anything on them? Or <laughs> as it's just literally, and as you looked at the roadway in front of us, up and around, all of this liquid excrement was kind of spanning out in the trajectory of the lorry truck. And one of the colleagues, she said, well, sometimes you have to walk through your own mess to get to the other side. That is the actual message of hexagram 13, fellowship, because the unity of it, the union of forces, is after struggle, after strife. It's as if we had to go through the hard part, we had to go through the mess to get to the other side. That is the same message that they're talking about today. And so this is where they're saying, don't be, don't, as, as uh, Brigitte said, don't buy into the loop. Don't buy into the noise. Don't buy into the static. Because it won't, it's not, it won't sustain. It won't continue. It will crumble and fall and will advance and move forward. Um, and so hexagram 13, fellowship with men in the open, success. It furthers one to cross the great water. The perseverance of the superior human furthers, advances. So see this whole, the whole message here is fellowship with human, humankind in the open. Fellowship, unity, goodness, oneness, in the open, success. It is advantageous to cross the great river. It's the perseverance of the superior human that advances. It's not our shadow. It's not this what Pluto is bringing up and bringing to light so that we can transcend it and transmute it. It's not that that advances. It's that that gets transmuted. Because the perseverance of the superior, the conscious, the good, furthers. It's a beautiful moral and story. Um, and it goes along, I want to bring up on my screen here, I'm going to bring up and share with you the North Point Journal. This is Pam Youngin's, oops, wrong one. There we go. Boy, is Mercury Retrograde having fun with me today. <laughs> so this is from Pam Youngin's North Point Journal. Um, and it talks about, what she's talking about is there's a new, um, it's right here, pardon me. There's a comet, brand new discovered, newly discovered comet, Nishimura will make its closest approach to Earth this Tuesday, coming within 78 million miles of our planet. So the comet is named after the space photographer Hideo Nishimura, who first observed it. The point, though, here is comets are visitors that travel through space from the far reaches of our solar system. On a spiritual level, comets symbolize insights and wisdom coming into our awareness. Since Comet Nishimura was only discovered a few weeks ago, it signifies the arrival of new information that may affect our choices and our collective trajectory. So again, what's new moon in Virgo? Virgo representing divine feminine, the matriarch. Matriarch rule. 
And here's this from far reaching solar places. Here's this newly discovered comet. Astrologer Rod, uh, Rod Chang writes that in China, comets are called broom stars because they sweep away debris and all that binds us to the past. Once the cleansing process is completed, we are more open to the new. Here's this. It furthers us to cross the great river. Bright is the message of the day. Follow your soul to its highest point. This letting go of the past, this purifying and cleansing. Mr. Chang also explains that the word for comet in Chinese is hu zin, with hu being equivalent to the English word wisdom. He interprets the arrival of a comet as a reminder to wield, and I just want to bring up this image, wield the sword of wisdom to cut away attachments. I'm bringing this up so you can see that beautiful. And look at this. It's like Excalibur's sword. Wield the sword of wisdom to cut away attachments, to release ourselves from the past, to let go what no longer serves us. Because it's the sword of wisdom, this comet that's newly discovered, that's coming to, you know, the broom effect, to cleanse away the old, to make room for the new. That is what's on offer here. And here, the Virgo new moon, she's talking about um, on Thursday, the, marking the start of a new lunar cycle. This is a significant lunation primarily because it activates four of the slower moving planets in our solar system, occurring at 21 degrees, 58 minutes Virgo. The new moon is opposite Neptune and Pisces, trying, so it's Opposite or opposing Neptune, Pisces, uh, Neptune and Pisces. It's trine, harmonious, Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. And a great benefactor and expect the unexpected, Uranus. And also trine Pluto in Capricorn. The Neptune opposition is challenging in nature, requiring that we balance reason and intuition. The tendency at first may be to seesaw between Virgo's desire to analyze a problem and figure out every step needed to solve it, and the Piscean call to simply accept the situation and have faith in the unknown. A newly observed comet bringing something to cleanse something away. Uranus, expect the unexpected. Having faith in the unknown. That 29th degree that we've talked about for some time. That aneretic degree of faith. The shadows of these two polarities are excessive worry on one end of the spectrum and apathy or inability to take action on the other. The fulcrum of the seesaw, the balance point, is found by being responsible, taking care of the necessary, practical details, but also being open to higher guidance. Follow your soul to its highest point, being open to higher guidance, and then entrusting the outcome to the universe. The Earth Grand Trine aspect in the new moon chart between the sun moon jupiter uranus and pluto provide a harmonious flow of energy for us to access and utilize together these five planets are forming a configuration called an earth grand trine the positive qualities uh, qualities associated with an earth grand, grand trine are endurance um, endurance and persistence an ability to commit to a goal and do the work necessary to achieve it, and being able to employ the practical skills and methods that enable a successful revolu uh, re revolution. Resolution. This configuration also supports using both common sense and creative resourcefulness and confers an awareness of right timing, divine timing. That's, so you can see how all of these pieces are culminating. And then they said to me, the third thing that the Unseen said for this week was union, unity, unity in numbers. And I instantly had this awareness and flash of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy in the Old Testament is about the, the numbers, literally, of the Israelites and their um, deliverance from enslavement. And so there's this union, union, unity in numbers. And then they said, advance is guaranteed. The aspects of this, all of this that we're talking about, it's guaranteed. 
The advance is guaranteed. The outcome is assured. I know it may not look like that on the, on the, on the world stage. I'm right there with you. However, what the unseen is saying is, and as Brigitte shared, don't get caught up in the illusion. Don't get caught up in the loop. Don't get caught up in the static. Stay focused on the prize. Follow your soul to its highest point. That is the greater message. Now, the fourth thing is, and I, I is quite beautiful, and four being find, foundational. And they said, I have a dream. And it was as if God's source is speaking. And then it's, and then I heard, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. It's the battle hymn of the Republic and the song by Odetta. And I'm going to post the song for you. What it brought about was um, Dr. Martin Luther King's Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous speech, I Have a Dream. I'm not going to read the entire thing. I'm going to post it on the show comments. However, it's talking about five score years, five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today, Abraham Lincoln, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Because all of this, remember, this is through the lens of the civil rights era, through the liberation and the freedom and the um, from enslavement of the African American community. And yet, take that lens and broaden it back to see humanity, so the Israelites being delivered from enslavement, African Americans being delivered from enslavement. The greatest arc of this story is humanity being delivered from enslavement, from the shadow. Adam and Eve, the fall, this enslavement, and being delivered from it. And so in parts of this, when the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, and remember, Pluto, not since the founding of America, has Pluto been an Aquarius? So, Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. They're talking about, the unseen is talking about our birthright, our lineage, our nobility. This note was a promise that all men, all men, women, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The ideal, be in the new, the ideal becomes the new reality. So this promissory note that we are to fall heir to is represented in America, but it's represented for the whole of the whole of humanity, of humankind. They're talking about, we refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. Well, we believe that, we refuse to believe that this liberation, this freedom, this deliverance, that they're in the great vaults of opportunity, that they're insufficient, that they won't arrive, they will. Because they are in the great vaults. They are the ideal. They are the promise. There are sufficient funds. We have also come to this hollowed spot to remind America of the first, a fierce urgency of now. There is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. See, just as then, we are at a turning point. There is a grander arc here that is turning. 
Piscene to Aquarian, Patriarchal to Matriarchal. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley to the sunlit path of justice, deliverance. Now is the time to lift ourselves, to place ourselves upon the bedrock of brotherhood, unity, union of forces, oneness, togetherness, out in the open. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. So there's a beautiful piece, and and I am paraphrasing and, and, and applying this, Dr. Dr. King's Jr.'s, Martin Luther King Jr. speech, against the greater backdrop, in no way to, to, to diminish its uh, direct context then. It speaks to a greater context for humanity then and now. So... And this is beautiful. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. Remember, it says that the superior human, it's because the perseverance of a higher ideal, wisdom, that we must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. S-O-U-L. Soul force. This speech was delivered in 1963. And here he's talking about the empowerment and the power of the soul. Um, However, we have come to realize that their destiny, so he's talking about the disparity between the white community and the black community, and he's saying, we must not distrust one another, for it is evidenced by their presence here today that we have come to realize that their destiny is tied with our destiny, union of forces. And they have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. And as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always walk ahead, march ahead. We cannot turn back. The arc of destiny is forward. So as much as some may want to go back to a time where their power was omnipresent, omniscient, you know, all-encompassing. That day has already come and gone. That day has already been experienced. We move forward. We do not go back. So, no, no, we we cannot be satisfied and will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream heaven and fire. And then lastly, um, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. And lastly, I just want to share this piece. Um, And when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the world words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And that 
is a statement, and for me, it's a soul statement of being completely liberated, un, unchained, unbound as humans from what has kept us down to liberate us to a higher ideal, to the ideal. And it is our mantra this week. Our mantra this week is free at last. And you see the image of the butterfly and in the heart, in the center of the butterfly is this beautiful uh, orb coming through, opening up that liberates and frees us for this moment, for this time, this destiny, because it's, we've, it's been afforded us. We all are a part of its unity, of its construct. And again, it is the perseverance of this higher ideal that furthers, that delivers us. Last but not least, let me bring in, um, there's a beautiful quote here. It says, life becomes brilliant when purpose is a light that shines upon it. Life becomes brilliant when purpose is a light that shines upon it. And in this, we have this obligation, this opportunity to rise, this opportunity to be all that we said we, that we are, that we could be. And while this may seem, you know, I often say this, while it may seem airy-fairy or um, idealistic um, or ideal, what the unseen has been sharing with us from November 17th, 2021 forward is this message. This message that there is a day that comes where we are delivered where we are no longer enslaved, where the soul leads, where the ideal is the new reality, that the matriarch rules, she returns. And the energy of that is so powerful. And again, it's not to denigrate the patriarchal rule. Each, everything is purposeful. It's simply the, the, uh, the, re- the reality, the truth, that that era of time has completed itself. Life is cyclical. And so it is not to cleave to and hang on to a bygone era. It is to bring it all up, receive the best of the best of it, look at what was wrong so that we know what's right, and to maintain this higher ideal of union within ourselves, with each other, because of course, that is the that has been the point and purpose, that has been the bedrock of the patriarchal rule. I mean the commandments. Love thy neighbor as thyself, love love thy neighbor as thyself, and thy God above all other. It's like if you follow just the first one, you would never do harm to another because you're not going to harm yourself. And God representing a higher ideal, a higher source, a higher power, is to look to that soul source connection, be guided by it. Let me just finish up in in, uh, with hexagram 13, fellowship. It's known as Tung Jen. It's hidden influence, 44, coming to meet encounter, coming to meet and encounter your higher self, your soul self, your divine nature, your divinity, your nobility. It's underlining cause, seven, army, correct discipline. It's a seven year, all year long. And it says, Tung Jen is a hexagram that explores your principles, character, integrity, and how you interact with others. In joining with another, and this is from uh, cafeosoul.com, Carrie Hone. In joining with another, the relationship will allow you to share a special connection, but is not always a romantic or, ho- or, or harmonious interaction or relationship. It's the union of self. It's the union of us as, as one. 
This is because there is more of an emphasis on gaining clarity about how you behave in relationship to others. Yet, there is a lot to learn from these partnerships. We are often attracted to groups because of our shared interests. Once in the group, however, we discover the ways in which we are different. So it, it points out both our synergy, our likeness, and our uniqueness. But that is the point, the seesaw, right? The point is to harmonize our uniqueness and our likeness. It is not to raise one over the other. It is to harmonize them, to bring them into union. The hidden influence of coming to meet allows for the exploration of shadow, of the shadow in your relationships. It is an opportunity to own the dynamics you bring to your relationships rather than blame others for your condition. When you can discover even the smallest insight about yourself through a relationship, regardless of its duration, it has been successful. See, we can we can discern something. You know, people come into our lives, a season, a reason, a lifetime. Okay, we can have an experience, and it may take a lifetime. Let's just say it's a season. It's a very long season. And that same example comes again in a different package, a different person. We can get that lesson. We can see it and get that lesson in a nanosecond. And say namaste, I bow to the divine in you and walk on by. I don't need to elongate. I got the lesson. I learned it. I received it. I need not engage and repeat it again. Now, many people engage and repeat again because they're not done with the lesson. They haven't learned it. But that's because they haven't been willing to look inside to see what this external force, character in our play, is mirroring to us. Because they're blaming others. Because when you, can, when you can discover even the slightest, the smallest insight about yourself, it's successful. You move on. You move forward. Moving away from the underlining cause of ARMY, we had the opportunity to put individual expression aside to work as a team. Now partnerships have to be viewed in terms of how we can best serve them while discovering more about ourselves. How to be in union, in unity, with others, and discover more about ourselves. Fellowship places emphasis on socializing, so if you have been introspective, it is time to return to the group. There is a sense of caring and emotional well-being at play as you interact with others. If you are isolated from others, fellowship is a call to realize that no person is an island. We are part of a tapestry of interaction, yet each individual fulfills their own destiny. Fellowship presents a relationship with an emphasis on what it can teach you about yourself. So this is a beautiful piece where we learn from the fellowship. We learn from the uniqueness and the likeness. That is the way. And it is not to raise or denigrate one over the other. It is to realize the empowerment of them in unity. The joining of forces. The union of forces. The crossing of the great river. So back to... The, the civil rights era movement with Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, he spoke to this exact thing, to the u- uniqueness and likeness, to the deliverance of all humankind, that they are inextricably intertwined. It was point, as poignant then and, and on point then as it is now. And that is their message. And the message is, we cross that great river together. The old way is about division, denigration, one over the other. Dare I say, hate over love. 
the new, and, and they're giving this to me in the moment, you know, the, the Old Testament, fear-based. The New Testament, Old Covenant, New Covenant. The New Covenant, love. It's the same thing. So they are saying to us, <laughs> in this moment, they are literally saying to us, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's a whole new day. I have a dream. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. This whole leap in lizards. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Because the ideal becomes the new reality. It is a culminating. And I know we are weary and I know we are tired. <laughs> However, again, it talks about the perseverance of. Because we do get there. We do receive the promise. And thereby, and they said lastly, number five, the unseen said, it was the song from Pat Benatar. And the album that it's on, and you can't make this up if you tried, the album that it's from is Live from Earth. That is the album title. The song is Love is a Battlefield. Hexagram 13 says, after the sacrifice, after the struggle, after all of these things, we receive the union, the deliverance, the ideal. It's after the struggle that we come together. Love is a battlefield. And that is, that is really the point. I hope this is resonating with all of you. Um, please place in the comments and let me know. And um, because their message is is the the unseen's message is really quite clear. Union of forces. The bridging of the divide. The crossing of the great river. Bright is the message of the day. I have a dream. Love is a battlefield. To get to the to get to the purity. Uh, it's the devil card and the lover's card in the tarot. The devil's card is the same two individuals in their in their nudeness, enslaved. On the lover's card, it's the same two individuals, liberated, free, pure. So we can we can see love is a battlefield. In order to get to the purity of it all, we went through the struggle. However, there becomes a time, a day, an era where that struggle is over. That enslavement is over. The liberation is made manifest. And that era, that golden era, leads um, with the matriarch, matriarchal rule at the forefront. The Divine Mother, nourishment, love, intuition, empathy, kindness, goodness. That is what leads and rules that era. That's where we are. That's where we're headed. And that is what they're saying shall be. Um, Olivia is saying it's time for this divide we have been experiencing to stop. Exactly. And realize our part, each of us, 8 billion souls on the planet. Realize your internal divide. Where have you been divided internally? Because, of course, it contributes to the whole. 8, bil 8 billion unique souls as one body, one likeness, one experience. And how we will deliver ourselves in concert with union of forces, we will move forward. And it's very interesting. I find this very interesting that Aquari the, uh, the constellation of Aquarius is, is the water bearer. And so it is matriarchal, and yet its representation is the divine masculine 
pouring forth some of the waters, the, the living waters. See, they didn't harmonic. It's not one over the other. It is the joining of forces, the union of forces, the bridging, the crossing, the divide. That we are stepping into. I'll leave it with that. Thank you all again for all of your comments and your presence and your energy on this journey. Again, I hope I did this justice this week. It was it was a lot of disparate pieces with a unified story and thread. And I will place all of this in the comments for you. And I will see you next week. Until then, be well and wonderful. And as they said, follow your soul to its highest point. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.